this is Wes McDermott. This is the final video in Chapter 2. So in this video, this is the Unity Editor hands-on. So what we're going to do in this video is um, we're just going to uh, walk through Unity. We're going to uh, you know create like a, a very, very basic scene, and we're going to kind of um, just actually use all the things that we've been watching here in Chapter 2. Okay, so I'm starting here. I've got the Angry Bots project open. We're going to use some assets from this, but what we're going to want to do is create a new scene for this. Uh, so first thing, let's uh, let's just kind of go through and fix our UI a little bit. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to take this game view here, and I'm just going to left click, drag and drop this tab here, and just snap this over to the side here, so I can have uh, both sides. And I might change my aspect ratio here to the 1280 by 720. Uh, something else I'm going to want to do is go ahead and go up to my window here and uh, pull my console out. So uh, make sure that I have my console. I'm going to grab this tab, left click and drag and snap it down uh, to the project browser down here so we can have that uh, for us to use a little bit later on. Uh, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to use some of these assets, but let's start by creating a new scene for ourselves. So we'll come up to the top of the UI and we'll say File and we'll do New Scene. And we won't save this scene here. And uh, then the first thing we're going to do is going to save this scene. So with the new scene open, I'm just going to hit, uh, what I'll do is I'll just come over here to save scene. And uh, we'll call this demo. And you can see that it's going to place this in our assets folder. So we'll hit save. And here's our demo scene. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is uh, just go ahead and come up here to my file and do my build settings here. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I add uh, this, this demo scene here to my build. So I've got this open already, so I'm just going to click the Add to Current button. Now you can see that our demo scene here is available. Let's just left click, drag and drop this all the way to the top. So we basically make this our, uh, our first uh, scene that runs at, uh, this. excuse me, our first scene that loads at uh, runtime. Okay, so we've got this set up. Here's our perspective view. We can't really see our grid or anything. So let's go ahead and just turn off our, our sky box, fog, and lens flare effects, and you can see that it now kind of toggles our grid on so we can see that what we're doing a little bit better. And um, first, let's go ahead and just grab some uh, assets here from, um, from that uh, angry, uh, angry Bots. So uh, in our project browser, let's just kind of expand this view a little bit, and let's just click the Models button and kind of look at some models. Uh, here's this uh, catwalk here. So what I'm going to do is just uh, come over, look at my inspector here. I'll pull open uh, this uh, preview window, and I can kind of look, take a quick preview of this object. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Let's just left-click, drag, and drop this straight into our scene. So now we've got this uh, object here into our scene. I'm going to hit the F on the keyboard to focus that into my selection. You can see that it's actually sitting pretty high off the grid. So let's come over to our inspector and let's kind of zero out these parameters. So I'm going to hit the zero key, tab, zero, tab, zero. So now you can see what I've done there is I've taken the position and I've zeroed that all the way out. And now what I'll do is I'll just hit the F key one more time and that'll focus that selection. And now you can kind of see, uh, you know, where we're operating here. So uh, right now you can see that we're in pivot mode and you can see where this pivot is. So if I actually go and uh, hit the E key to bring up my rotate tool and I start to rotate on the Z axis you can see that that works like a hinge joint uh, so that what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and I'll click this pivot button and I'll put this into center mode and now if I hit the W on the keyboard to bring up my move tool I can uh, have a, a better look at where that center is and so now you can see that um, it's now all of our transforms are going to be in the center of the object and then over here in my hierarchy you can see that we have this catwalk a object Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just duplicate this guy a couple times. Uh, so if I come up to my edit menu, I can come down and you can see that I've got some duplicate function here. That's just Apple D or Control D on Windows. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. Uh, you can see here in the hierarchy, we now have two of these guys. I'm going to click on the X axis and just kind of left click and drag this guy over. So now we have two of these guys. Now all I'm going to do here is I'm just kind of making an extended platform. And I'm kind of building uh, basically kind of uh, on the grid, so to speak, where I'm, I'm reusing these elements here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I kind of want to really snap these guys together. So a really good way to do that here in Unity is using the uh, vertex snapping option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the V key on the keyboard, and that's going to put me in a vertex snap. So now as I just kind of move my mouse around this object, the transform manipulator is kind of snapping itself uh, to all these vertices. And so what I want to do is I'm just going to zoom in. I want to take this vertex here and I want to snap it to this to its neighbor over here. So I'm going to hold down the V key, uh, move my mouse over into this area, left click and just drag my, just kind of gesture drag right over to uh, this other grate here. And you can see where that just uh, snaps right into place. So we'll do this again. Now uh, what I'll do is I got this guy selected, Apple D to clone, move this guy out of the way a little bit, uh, hold down the V key, vertex snap, get the transform into the uh, right vertex I want to use, left click, drag it over, and snap it. Same thing, let's do this one more time. So Apple D, let's uh, kind of move this guy out of the way. 
Let's just kind of zoom in here. Uh, hold down the V key and snap. So now we've just kind of snapped that guy into position a little bit. So uh, now you can see that uh, we've got a little bit larger platform. We've reused a single game object. All this stuff is going to batch. Uh, so if we go ahead and we've got our game view, we can't really see what's going on yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is just grab hold of our camera. Let's hit the F key uh, to um, kind of focus in on that camera. And now let's just move this camera up. Let's grab hold of the Z axis handle and pull this guy in a little bit. And then uh, maybe we'll go into the rotate mode by hitting the E key on the keyboard. And then we'll just kind of pivot, kind of rotate this guy down. Hit the W key to go back into move. And I'm just going to move this guy up on the Y a little bit. And then again, rotate uh, on the X. So again, just kind of a little bit of translation here. And uh, at this point, you can see that we're actually in our uh, local space. So uh, I actually want to move this camera forward a little bit. But if I kind of move it this way, you can see that not only is it moving forward, but it's also moving down. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change from local to global mode. And now I can move this guy forward without translating it down. So you can see how I can start to move that forward. So I've just kind of framed that view up. And so, so now let's go ahead and just add ourselves uh, another object on here. So again, I'm going back to my project browser. I'm going to kind of just scroll through this guy, try to find something else. Let's see, what do we got here? A kiosk. Um, and I don't think we want that. There's some hoses. Uh, we don't want that. Robot arm. No, let's just find something here real quick. Uh, here we go. How about a crate medium? That's always good. Okay, so here we got a create medium. Let's just left click, and this time I'm just going to throw this guy right here into the hierarchy. So I can also just left click and drag into the hierarchy view. And uh, what I'm going to do is you can see that he's. Uh, if I can hit F on the keyboard, he focuses. He's way off uh, into the distance here. So let's just go ahead and set his set his uh, position. So again, we're just going to zero this out. So I'm just hitting tab on the keyboard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this guy again. Hit F on the keyboard to focus that. And now let's just go ahead and, and just kind of place him right here on the grates. Uh, another way that I could kind of help do that is uh, let's go into an orthographic view. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to left click on the X axis uh, handle here. And now I can kind of uh, move myself into an orthographic view. So I can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm also going to just hit the R key to scale this guy up. So I'm in scale mode. I'm scale this guy up. Hit the W key to go back into move. And now I've just kind of translated this guy into place here. Uh, and now I'm going to go right back into um, my perspective mode. And then I'm going to hit the E key just to just rotate this guy on the Y axis a little bit. Um, not really sure why, but yeah, just might as well. Okay, so um, now we've got these objects set up. Uh, let's go ahead and add just a little bit of some lighting to this scene. Um, but before we, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go game object. Let's do a create other. And this time we're going to create a directional light. So we create a directional light into our scene. It's placed at the origin. Let's hit W on the keyboard and just kind of move it out of the way. Now, directional light, position doesn't matter. But uh, what I like to do is just kind of like to have them kind of in the, in the way or in kind of in the uh, position that they would naturally be at. So, you know, directional light kind of simulates sunlight, but um, I typically move them. Uh, rotation is really all that matters. But So right now, you can see we're not seeing anything. We're not seeing any kind of lighting or anything like that. And that's because of the shader that these guys are using by default. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's go ahead and select this guy here. Let's go over to our inspector. And uh, so we've got uh, some components here. And like we talked about in our previous previous video we have this material and by default this guy's using this uh, self illumination angry bot shader uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, just left click on this and I'm just gonna choose this bump diffuse and so what that's going to do is, um, and actually I'm going to have to go and find the normal map again. Let's not worry about that. Let's just, just do a diffuse for this for this portion here. So uh, now you can see that all this is using is a diffuse texture. And let's do the same thing for these grates here. So I'm going to select one of these guys. And uh, what you'll notice here is that, you know, we don't see anything. Uh, and the reason being is if we come back over to the hierarchy, you can see this guy's got a little drop-down arrow. If we do that, you can see that this is kind of like a little nested uh, hierarchy in itself. So we've got catwalk, we've got this cube, uh, and then we will we've got these two cube surfaces here. So we actually have like two surfaces uh, in one that are underneath a, a single transform. And uh, that's something that you can easily do. So inside of Unity, uh, what you can do is, like I said, you can create a, an empty game object. So let's say we just create this empty game object. 
and I go ahead and I position him into zero here. So we zero this guy out, and he's just sitting, you know, out here. There's nothing a part of this. If you look, there's nothing here. And uh, let's just say that I want to take this crate here that I have, and I want to place it inside of this game object. So like setting up a child-parent relationship. So I'm just going to take this crate, left click, drag and drop it right over top of the game object, and then what it does is you can see that it parents or places that create, cr excuse me, that crate medium inside of this game object. And now I, what I can do for this is I can just say this is uh, uh, crates. Okay. So sometimes you can use a game object not actually for a playable or any type of object at all in your scene. You could just use it for straight organizational purposes. And I do that quite often. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll come over to this catwalk. We'll grab this P cube. And uh, let's just do the same thing. Let's just pull this guy into diffuse. Um, let's see. Let's do the same thing for this poly surface here. Let's just change the... Um, the shader that this guy's using. So now you can see that um, we, we have uh, changed the shader on this guy. And if we go ahead and grab our light, and uh, let's change some parameters on our light here, like the color. So let's go ahead and give this thing a different color. So I click this little color swatch here, and I'll come over to this yellowish type, and I'll go ahead and color this guy yellow. So you can see where this is actually affecting uh, the color here inside of our scene. And something else I'll do is I'll go to my shadow type, and I'll just turn on hard shadows. And uh, so you'll notice that we don't actually see any shadows. Uh, so sometimes what you need to do is uh, make sure that your scene set up to work with shadows. So let's do this real quick. Um, you know, I didn't create this angry bot scene, so uh, sometimes things can change. So let's do this. Let's go over to edit, and uh, let's go over to our project settings, and we're going to go to our quality settings. And you can see that we're set to use this good setting here. And if we come down and look at good setting, uh, shadows by default is disabled. So if we change this, maybe we change this to, uh, let's see, simple, uh, beautiful, uh, or let's see, underneath simple here, you can see that hard shadows only is checked. Uh, and so now, underneath that quality setting, you can see that we're starting to see the shadows inside of our scene. So again, uh, as we mentioned in a, in a previous video, you can see where these quality settings are going to change uh, how your game is. So let's just say that this was a game and we wanted to be able to target different platforms and you want to say like... Um, when you build your game, you can actually give someone the ability to choose what type of, um, what you know, what type of quality they want to run this game at. So if they say, well, you know, I don't have a very good PC, I want to run it at the fastest quality, you can see one of the things it's going to do is disable real-time shadows. So in our case, we'll just leave this at simple, and now you can see that we have some shadows here, and uh, we'll just kind of position this light a little bit, and we'll just kind of rotate this guy around. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll increase his intensity just a little bit so we can see this a little better. And so, uh, you know, just for um, demonstration's sake, we've, we've added a light, we've colorized it, or, you know, tinted it here with a color, and we've added some hard shadows to this guy. Okay, so now let's go in and add a little bit of interactivity to this. We'll add a little script. Uh, I'll tell you what, before we do that, let's select our camera. I usually don't like this blue background, so I'm going to come over to my inspector. I've got this background color. Uh, let's go ahead and just change that to black. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add some uh, interactivity. A uh, little script real quick. And uh, what we'll do is we'll make a really simple script that allows us just to click on this great object. And uh, when it does that, it'll print something out to the console. So something really simple. So we'll select our assets folder here. Uh, let's create ourselves a new folder in this. So let's do create folder. And we'll call this uh, demo uh, script. Well, here, let's just call this demo. And... Uh, so now what we'll do is I'll just double click. I'm inside this folder here. Let's do create. Let's make ourselves a C sharp script and we'll call this demo. And now let's just double click to kind of run this script here. So uh, double click. That's going to open that up into mono develop. And now we can actually start writing some things. So we've got our start function here, which is our initialization. And we have our update. And so what we're going to do is we're going to want to shoot a ray cast out into the scene. Here, let's go back to Unity here. So uh, from our game view, what we're going to do is we're going to click and it's going to uh, shoot a ray out into the scene. And it's going to hit something. So, you know, we have to have a collider on some of these guys. It's going to hit something, and uh, then it's going to uh, tell us what it hit. And then if it's um, this, this crate object that we want it to be, we're going to print something out to the console. And so to do that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to do a raycast. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to use this uh, raycast. So if I, you can see that we have raycast hit. And so this is something that we would, uh, what I would typically do is just kind of look this up here into the script reference. Uh, so here we'll come over here to our Unity script reference. And you can see that I've kind of, I've already found this here into the script reference. So raycast hit collider. And so like I told you in a previous video, like by default, this will be sitting at JavaScript. You could do C sharp. And this kind of gives us a code example of exactly 
exactly what we want to do. So uh, what we want to do is we want to kind of uh, look at, you know, input. Uh, tell you what, we can actually just copy all this stuff right here just for uh, speed sake here. So let's just copy this. Let's go back over to, well here, go into mono develop, and let's just paste this right here into our update function. And let's just take a look at what this is going to do for us. So we'll just kind of kind of clean this up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and pull off from the input. So we're going to do a little if statement here, say if input dot get mouse button down. And um, if we kind of look at this guy, we can say input dot get uh, you can see that we can get mouse button down, up, joystick names, get key, all these kind of things, access. And uh, in our last video, what we did was we took a look at, we went over here to edit, project settings, input, and we talked a little bit about the input editor, so um, how we're going to configure this kind of stuff, and so uh, or configure input. And that's what we're referencing here in our code here. So get mouse button down zero, so that's meaning uh, zero meaning like the left mouse button. So this is basically saying if we click the left mouse button, uh, then we're going to do uh, some of the code, which is right here. Uh, first off here, let's uh, go ahead and just kind of Let's zoom this in a little bit so you can see this uh, a bit better in the video. So uh, input got get mouse button down. We're looking at our left mouse button. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, create uh, a variable called for uh, the raycast hit, and we'll just you know like typically people could just call that hit. And then what we want to do is uh, we want to do this. We want to do ray. Uh, we want to create a variable called array. So this is the ray, and this ray equals our camera dot main dot screen point to ray. Okay, so it's basically saying I want to translate the screen point to array, and then it's going to ask for that position, and that position is going to be our input dot mouse position. So again, we're utilizing the input uh, API there to find this mouse position. And so camera dot main, how does it know that? Well, if we come back over here to Unity, we select our camera. Uh, we had talked in a previous video about tags, so you can see this camera is actually set to be the main camera. So this script is going to know that whenever you work with camera dot main, it's going to uh, basically do this. Uh, or basically know that it's it's utilizing whatever camera in your scene has the the main camera tag applied to it. Uh, so there's how we're using tags, and then so we basically have a raycast hit variable, we have a ray variable, and now what we want to do is we just want to do a, a quick check here. So we want to say um, if physics dot raycast. Uh, so we're going to do a raycast for the ray, uh, and then we're basically looking at this hit here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, well here this is we're going to change this a little bit. So let's do this. So let's make ourselves uh, inside this if. So if we have a, a hit here, let's just clean this up so you can see these brackets a little bit. Just kind of removing some of the white space here. Uh, so if physics.raycast, uh, and we're going to check the ray, uh, what we're going to do is check to see if we hit a certain object. So uh, if what we're going to do is we're going to say another if statement here. So I'm going to type if, and then we're going to say if hit dot collider dot game object dot tag is equal to and uh, let's just come up with a name we'll, we'll, we'll call this um, let's just do this we'll say crate and then we'll close out our quotes here so basically at this point we're going to check to see if whatever this hit whatever uh, this ray hit if it's collider attached to its game object dot tag is equal to crate uh, then we're going to do something and so what we're going to do is we're just going to do uh, debug dot log and we're just going to say uh, you know we let's do this we'll turn on cap locks here I say we clicked the crate and then end that with a semicolon there so we're going to cast out a ray uh, from the input dot mouse position. Uh, we're going to check to see if the hit dot collider dot game object dot tag. So whatever that thing hit, it's collider. If it's ta if it has a game object that has a tag called crate, then we're going to just log out. Hey, we clicked the crate. So let's go ahead and save this demo script. Let's go back over to Unity, and now we can actually apply that to our game object. So let's see. We've got our crate here. Um, let's just go ahead and just left click, drag and drop our script here onto our crate so now we have that set uh, one of the things that uh, we gotta do well two things to this for this to work is that uh, we need to actually have a tag for this guy so let's create a new tag so let's come over here to uh, add tag and uh, let's come into our tags here and then remember from the script we called this crate so now we have a new tag called crate let's select our item again and let's actually uh, set that tag so here we're just going to check that to crate so this game object has a tag called crate uh, and then one other thing we need to do is we had talked in the script let's go back to this guy that we were looking for a collider uh, so 
you know, in order for this to work, we have to have a collider on this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another component to this. And what we want to do is we want to add a physics component. Uh, we could do that through this button here. We can click this, and our little context drop-up menu is going to show up. So um, if we go to physics, you can see that uh, we can add a collider. So let's do a box collider. And what happens, we'll just kind of zoom in onto the screen here. You can see that... Um, We've got this kind of green bounding box. This is a collider around our object. And if we wanted to, we could come in and we could change the scale of this guy on the X and Y. So uh, by default, it kind of sets itself to be the bounding box of the object. And that's good. We'll kind of leave it at that. So now that we've got this set up, we've got our tag and we've got our box collider. Everything should work. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit play here. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my mouse over into the game section. I'm just going to click on the crate. And you can see that way down here in the bottom, we get some output. Let's go back to our console here so we can see this. We click the crate. Let's do that again. Let's get our mouse here. Here we'll just kind of maximize our game view here. Let's click the crate. And you can see that we click the crate. So as each time we click this, the ray is cast. It hits the collider. That collider's game object is true because its tag is set to crate. So then it runs that next line of code that next line of code which then just and that's going to close out chapter uh, two for to us. the console so we covered us. a lot in this video we kind of ran through this little project uh, very quickly uh, but what we really what I really wanted to, to kind of hit home and cover on this is just uh, you know how fast it is to actually work inside of unity and uh, what we actually covered here was we talked about you know we used uh, we used the project browser to find some elements uh, we placed some elements out here into our 3d scene we, we snapped uh, you know some objects together we, we rotated and translated some of these items around to kind of build up our scene here uh, we added uh, we you know we adjusted our camera we added a light we we checked our quality settings we added shadows uh, we did some parenting here within the hierarchy view. Uh, we uh, added a, a custom component here. We added a, a box collider to this guy. We set our own user tags. Uh, we also changed some uh, some materials. So so instead of using a we went onto the material of these guys and we, we changed what shader was actually being used. And then finally we went in and we created a very simple script that allowed us to click on an object and we were able to check to see that specific object based off uh, you know if, if the uh, ray that was cast from the mouse was uh, equal to the, the crate or the game object's tag of crate. Uh, and then we printed some information here out to our console. So we covered a lot of ground pretty quickly, uh, but I hope that helps to give you the overall big picture of of, of what Unity is and how it works uh, and how you can quickly build up your games and your projects within this editor.